day administration of the temple. Um, so I, um, the way I'm approaching this is very much from like a, a young Hindu perspective, um, someone who's never really come across a pandemic before, well, none of us have really, have we? Um, but I'll be focusing mainly on the practical side of things because I think that's something that's affected me a lot more. Um, so firstly, when obviously places of worship were told, places of worship were told to close, that was a big hit for us um, within our community. Um, temples are very much the focus and um, they're like the hub of our Hindu community um, and especially like within our ethnic community as well. Um, so when temples had to close, that was a huge, huge hit. Um, people lost their, their places of worship, people lost their spaces of social interaction. It's also a place where you meet family members, you meet your friends. Um, so it was a huge hit um, for us. Um, also the timing of the lockdown, um, it meant that we missed our annual festival um, and the annual festival is our highlight of the year. Um, it happens in May and we have a chariot that goes around on the roads. It's a bit like a carnival really. Um, so that was a massive shame because um, that's something that we always look forward to. Um, we also missed our new year as well that happened in April. Um, so it was really strange um, to celebrate our new year without going to the temple and receiving God's blessings. Um, but also one thing that's important is that Hinduism, the thing with Hinduism is that we very much personify God. Um, I don't know um, if any of you've been to a Hindu temple before, but it's all about the deities. The deities are kind of a physical representation of God. You dress them up, you give them a bath. Um, so we really do see the deities as God. And to suddenly not be able to have that was, was really strange for us. Um, so that's when... Um, so that's when we started live streaming things, uh, but obviously it's really weird seeing the service go on on the telly, but you're not there, the vibrations aren't there, you're kind of running in and out of the room. So that was really strange for us, um, but we did have a lot of demand for those live stream services. Um, we had almost like 300 families at one time just watching. And um, so that was really nice knowing that everyone was still engaging with the temple. Um, also with the elderly. So the el uh, our temple attracts a lot of elderly members. Um, so for us, a huge thing was checking up on them and making sure they were okay. Cause often, so my granddad, he is the current chairman of the temple. And I know that we kind of left, we were like, you're not allowed to leave the house, you're, you're stuck here. And for him not to go to the temple was massive because it was the first time in 30 odd years that he wasn't allowed to go to the temple because the temple was closed, but also because he was vulnerable. Um, so there was a lot of people like that where we had to, make sure they were okay it was just, I know I was talking to my granddad a lot more just making checking in on him um, and also the other elderly members of our community um, we also supported our food banks throughout um, the Epsom Yule food bank so we had a box outside and people were dropping things in and actually I think we raised a lot more um, we managed to collect a lot more food items than before um, so that was really good um, I think everyone really realized that now, it is a time of need for everyone within our community. Um, so, oh, and also um, one of the things that I was very passionate about was the youth. Um, I didn't, because the temple was closed, I didn't want them to kind of disengage with the temple and disengage with their faith, because obviously they had a routine of going to the temple every week and that was their time um, to engage with our faith. And I didn't want them just because the temple was closed just to kind of forget about it and just, you know, get carried away with working from home or doing your own thing or Netflixing or whatever they were doing. Um, so what we did was we had um, online classes. So we had, um, so the youth group would um, join every Monday evening and we'd have a quick chat. We'd talk about how we were all doing, talk about the temple, talk about what we were missing out on. Um, so we were like, oh, this time last year was a chariot festival and here we are talking on Zoom. Um, but it was just things like that, just to keep the youth engaged with each other um, and to know that we've all kind of got each other's back um, and to also just keep them connected with the temple because we really didn't want to lose them. Um, so that's the practical side of things. Um, spiritually, um, the Vedas and the Bhagavad Gita, which is our, um, our holy books, unfortunately, they don't say anything about pandemics um, in particular. Um, however, um, all our prayers um, play have a big emphasis on health is wealth. Um, and so for us, I think it was a time for everyone to kind of realize um, and focus on their health. Um, we do have a God of medicine called Dunban Three, um, and we did a special uh, ritual. Um, the priests were allowed to do it inside the temple. Uh, basically, we were praying to the God of medicine to come up with a vaccine. I think he's done a good job, hopefully. Um, but essentially, we were just praying for the good health um, of everyone. 
Um, but I think also um, spiritually, it was a time to realize that because as Hindus, we believe that God is within every single person and, and within everyone. Um, so it was a time to realize that although the temple, we can't go in at the moment, it's time that we look within and it's about self-awareness and it's about having keeping that faith in God without participating in the rituals. Um, and I think that was, I know that was challenging for me because it was really weird um, to constantly, like without going to the temple and taking part in the rituals, it was weird to not be able to do that and to do it on my own almost. Um, but I mean, I think, I think it did strengthen my faith in God, definitely. Um, we have a quote in Hinduism that says, um, whatever happened, happened for the good. Whatever is happening is happening for the good. Whatever will happen will also happen for the good. Um, so I think it's just about remaining optimistic and having faith in God. Um, and hopefully we'll all get through this. Um, but also um, one of the things that um, I think everyone was everyone picked up on was also um, the meaning of namaste. So when before lockdown happened in March, uh, Prince Charles um, went to an award ceremony and he did the namaste and everyone was kind of like oh that's a great greeting where you know you're not there's no physical contact involved um, and so I just wanted to highlight on that because namaste means I bow to the divine in you and so that's really us worshipping the divine in you and realizing that you are also God um, so I think that's something that I know when I'm like walking around like saying hi to people I'm always namaste -ing. Um so I think that's really important um, but all in all, I think this crazy time has made us realize that God really is within us. Um, and I'm sure when the temple is opened, it will be interesting to see how people do kind of come back to the temple and how their faith has changed. But I'm pretty sure for everyone it's strengthened um, and I really hope it has. Um, so, yeah, thank you.